it's going to be even worse. So just so you know, it will be recorded um, and posted to our website. So if you have friends that aren't here, we can let them know that along with the presentation when we're all done. Okay? I'm Seth Porter, I'm the principal here. This is my third year as principal, uh, my seventh year here at Valley. Uh, prior to that, I was the vice principal here for four years. Uh, I've been in education way too long. Um, 20 something years now. I was a teacher for Sydney for a long time, and then an administrator in Wayne and Chad before I came into that. Uh, I live in Rockway, so there is a good chance that your children will end up in high school with my children. I currently have a sixth grader. I have a ninth grader who goes to the Mars County Go Tech, and then I have a seventh grader. So there is a good chance that they will cross paths somewhere in the next seven years, let's say. This is Johnny Nishman, uh, principal, vice principal here at Valley uh, This is his third year as well. Uh, John is a former teacher, also a course of He was a social studies teacher in the middle school and course of for a long time as well. He has a very young girl who will not cross paths with her children because she's only two. Just some other important people. The, the two people who pretty much run our building are our two secretaries, just like any school, uh, Ms. Simonis and Ms. Rowley. So throughout the course of time, we'll definitely get to know them. And then our two counselors, one is Morgan Kate, and she works with the students with letters A to K. And then Joey McDonald will take the rest of the alpha, all through the end. And then our two nurses are Ms. Seidel and Ms. Sigma. Ms. Seidel is the head nurse for the district. I don't know if uh, some of you over the last 20 plus months might have spoken to her at some time. But she's the head nurse. Our nurse here, and then Ms. Sigma is a part time nurse who is here from about 9 to 1 every single day. We'll get right into our schedule. We have a nine period day here. The academic classes, including world language for sixth graders, are periods one through four, six and seven. Every sixth grader will have lunch period five. And then their cycle classes, art, writing, and phys ed are all period eight and nine. And you'll see a sample schedule later in the presentation. Um, and then we'll talk more about the cycle classes and things like that because you're going to be able to select those cycle classes for your students and you'll get a full uh, sometime tomorrow. Full year courses. So math, language arts, social studies, science, world language is a full year course. For sixth graders they get a semester or a half a year of Spanish and a half a year of French. Okay? At the end of sixth grade, they get to choose which language they want to continue. So in 7th and 8th grade, it's a full year of Spanish core. Art and writing meets every other day, and then phys ed meets every other day. They are married to one another. And what I mean by that is if you have phys ed on an A day, you have art and writing on a B day the same period. And again, you'll see a sample. I talked a little bit, if you were in the earlier meeting, drop off and pick up. So over the last two years, we kind of changed our job off um, and the way the students enter the building. And right now, our plan is to continue with that. Of course, if something changes, we'll always communicate it with you. But right now, if your child will take the bus, if your student will take the bus, they'll come through these main doors. Any student that is driven to school or walk to school, they must, if they're driven, they must get dropped off at the park. There is a police officer who crosses them every single day before and after school. They will go down the side of the building into the lower room. Sixth grade lockers are downstairs. So it's just really easy to come in and they go down the ramp and they're at the lockers. If they're getting dropped off or picked up. If not, they'll just walk through the main hallway and go right to their locker or onto the home. After school, if you're picking up your student after school, again, you must pick them up in the the entire parking lot is full with the buses as we call the Smith at the bus. We start pretty early. Mm -hmm. I heard it a little. Yeah. It is very early. Our doors open at 7 20. 
So the buses are getting, if you live across the county, you think you, your child might get picked up over the city. It is very really, I understand. Um, but they get used to it pretty quick. The, the good part, you always got to look at the positive, right? You look at the end of the day, and they're out pretty early too. But the, the doors open at 720. That's when they can come into the building. They have a couple minutes of their locker and then they're home room at 725. So they must be home room by 725. So if you are dropping your student off, please get them here on time. Okay? It's really hard for me to have a conversation with a, with a student or a student to have a conversation and say, you're late quite a bit. And they're like, but my mom, my dad, whoever's driving me, please just make sure that you do your best to try and get them here. Uh, 20 after so they can get back into the building and be prepared. Every period, most of the time, is 43 minutes. When they have a double of math and VLA, of course, about uh, 86 minutes of class. Okay? Uh, we do run an advisory schedule, and we'll see that in a minute. That's run first thing in the morning, so they, the classes are only 40 minutes twice a week. Once we get going. There's a schedule, a sample of schedule. Again, I'll post this for you, so feel free to take pictures, but if not, it will be online. Um, it looks a little more confusing to us, as I mentioned before, um, but they will get it very quickly. And we spend the first day of school, we extend homework for about an hour. So the teachers will do all of this with them uh, and get them to understand their schedule. But if you look, uh, if you look at six, period six, you see how there's two sixes, there's a six math advanced, and then a six ELA. The math advanced only meets on the A day, every other day, and then the ELA meets on the B day, and it backs up to their other ELA. This student's math class is broken up by lunch. So some students will have math and ELA first thing in the morning, periods one, two, and three. Others will have it four, six, and seven. Okay? It's just not good No rhyme or reason. And then you'll see period nine, that's where A and B comes in just for the PE. Just another way you can view it. So there's a total A day schedule and B day schedule. This, this is an option on Genesis. So I know that the elementary schools use Genesis a little bit. We use Genesis for everything. Okay? Um, we don't send hard copies on anything. Everything will come through school messenger or through Genesis. So for example, I mentioned the form that will come out about the cycle classes that I'll speak about in a, in a minute. That will come through Genesis. So you will have to fill it out on Genesis. Just like at the beginning of the year, you fill out all the paperwork um, before you'll be able to see your student schedule. I mentioned advisory. We run advisory here, which is uh, Wednesday and Friday. Advisory is kind of like what you would think about as morning meeting that your students currently have with all that. We do different lessons. This, this program started many years ago, way before we were here. Uh, it came out of Princeton University, and since then it's been updated by our staff members to meet the needs of our students. So the most re uh, recent revision was last summer. So we had um, three or four teachers work on it after our staff had some input last month. So about a year ago, this time, teachers had some input, and then three staff members four staff members work together over the summer to kind of finalize it. And they talk about all different things, HIV, um, you know, social media, all different things go on in the advisory. Smaller groups, about 10 to 12 students, sometimes some groups are combined, so you have two teachers in there with about 24 students. Maybe one of your students' teachers, may not be. Really what we're looking for is another person that they get to know in the building that they might feel comfortable. Your students just had a visit from our eighth graders. I don't know if any of them shared that with you, but about a week ago, they, our eighth graders, a couple of our advisory groups, went down to Lake View River and met in each of the classes and talked to the students about the cycle classes, about what goes on here about. What I heard from the two principals was 
was that it was a great day. Um, our eighth graders end their advisory with a community service day. So some, uh, one of the advisories went to celebrate the children in the school right down the street, spent an afternoon with them. Some did beautification around Valley View, played with flowers, things like that. Um, a couple of the groups ran field day for our sixth and seventh graders. So all different things. In years past, the big project was a senior problem, but with everything we all know in the world in terms of COVID, we decided that it was not a good idea to have the senior problem this year because I mean, it's not something we do. Um, and what happens is when senior citizens come at lunch, served by our students, play some music for them, play bingo with them. The community gets involved because they, they give donations and they, you know, they do a little tricky trade kind of thing where everybody wants out. So it's a great, great program, something that we continue to work on. It's not something that's just, here it is, we always are trying to make it better. Cycle classes. Cycle classes. There's four working periods, so there are four cycles. That's what we call them. But every student must take health as one of their cycles. They also, all of these sixth graders will take STEM when they come. That means two cycles left of art, music, computers, and family consumer science. Fancy name for cooking. So when you get the form, you should really have a conversation with your student to see what they heard from the eighth graders and what they would be interested in, and then you get to write. We do our best to try and give each student at least their one of their top two choices. It's a daunting task. We've done a pretty good job of almost getting every student their first choice, but I never say that it's 100 percent because if everybody picks good, everybody can get it. It just doesn't work. Um, music is not playing an instrument, that's something totally different. We'll talk about band in a minute. Music is more learning about music theory. All different decades of music. Uh, same thing, computers, yes, they are really great with technology. I get that, but it's learning more about the computer, more about. I did an observation on a computer teacher, he was talking about Steve Jobs and you know, Apple and things like that this year. So he brings in a lot more than just this is how I want music. So it is definitely an interesting course. So again, get their input. It's really for them. We went to having the students choose a couple years ago, um, and it's really worked out really, really well. Uh, I will tell you that this was the first year your student is in Expo. This is the first year that any Expo student in sixth grade was able to take a cycle course. So next year, both our sixth and seventh graders will be able to take cycle because Expo has replaced our brand. All right, if you have an Expo student in your Sure, we can answer questions with them. Supplies. So this year we did not, the last two years we have not changed Virginia. We have not decided if we are changing Virginia. If that is determined, you have plenty of time to order a genuine form. We use ABTs um, for a genuine form. This turnaround is very quick, so please do not stress about it whatsoever. It's a, a conversation that Mr. Houston and myself will have with our community teachers to see if it's something that we need to do. Because we've worked very well the last two years with that. Supply list will be posted on our website. They'll also be emailed to you later in the summer. Okay, so don't stress it out. Um, the, each grade level creates a supply list per content. So for example, the ELA teachers in sixth grade will all ask for the same thing. Something new we started this school year. So that one, you don't have to wait for school to start. And be like, oh my gosh, when the kid now needs three, three little notebooks, and I gotta run out and that help. We're, we try to make it a lot simpler for everyone. Okay, so those will be posted again later in the summer. As I mentioned, on June 1st, our eighth grade advisory just went down. So we had about five groups. Three went to Lakeview and two went to River. Uh, 
students can view their schedule in late August. Again, you'll get a letter from the Sharing Twitter and myself just saying the parent portal will open on such and such a date. You must fill out all the forms before you get to see your students there. There'll be an open house in late August. Late August, like 20-something, is when we usually do. I promise you this, please do not, please do not, and I can't stress this enough, worry about your summer vacation around this open house. I promise you. This was the first year we did not bring them in. We tried something new. Because what I've seen over the last six years prior to this is they come in, let's say May, they walk around our country, they come in August again and walk around the building. And they come in September 1st and they're like, where's my homeroom? I get it. I understand. So again, I can't stress it enough. If you have a vacation plan and you get the letter and you're like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Do I come home to the show early? Do I do no. Do not do it. Don't do it. Because when they come in on the first day of school, like I mentioned, our homeroom is extended. It's probably about an hour. The teachers aren't great. They will show them the building again. They'll get lost day two again. Okay? <laughs> day two will show them the building again. It'll take them a couple of days. Okay? But I can't stress it enough. I, I get the phone call every August. The senior student's gotten the phone call for the last couple of years. We're on vacation. What, what are we going to do? We're not going to do anything. We're going to go on vacation every day time. It's right at the end of the summer. Your, your child is stressing out because they're starting a new school. Go have fun. Enjoy vacation and don't let it be a stressful experience. Extracurricular activities. So we have interscholastic sports. That means we play other schools and there could be a tryout process. We also have intramural sports, which is just in-house with our students and every student can be. Every student can be involved. You see up there in the fall, we have soccer for both boys and girls. We have cross country for both boys and girls. Soccer is a tryout process. Cross country is not a tryout process. If your child's willing to run, that's great. And then in the fall, we do an intramural after their seasons are over. It will depend what, what the coordinator of the intramural has done, one of our PE teachers. He's rotating. So don't play flag football, don't play disc golf, don't do different things with them. It's not one set thing. Uh, wintertime basketball, again, a trial process for both boys and girls. Wrestling, everybody makes it. They then wrestle off to see who gets to wrestle the matches and we try to get as many kids in as we can. Cheerleading, over the last couple of years, there's been, everybody's been cheerleading. And then again, we bring in and girl in after those basketball as well as volleyball, kind of combined And then springtime, baseball, softball, again, we will try that process. Mr. Angerman is in charge of our athletics, so you'll get a lot of information from him as well. There are specific things that you will see in a minute that you have to have physical stuff. Again, one of the things that we get every summer is, I didn't get my child's physical when they gave her a child for a fall sport. And our hands are tied. Because even if your doctor says yes, the district doctor has to approve it. Why? Not sure, but that's what the law says. So again, please just keep up with these dates and they're also posted on the website. And there they are. August 5th, be here quick. So again, this will all be posted up there for you. But if your child is interested in fall sports, August 5th, there is always at least one person in the building over the summer. One of the two secretaries, Mr. Anderson, and myself are always in here. So you can, if you get the physical done in the middle of July, you can just drop it off and the nurse will do it, and then it will go over to the district doctor as well. Just like you have to do now, if your child is going to be absent, you must call the school. And just say, you must be absent. Okay? If not, you'll get a verbal call from us saying, we, you know, we haven't heard John is not here today. Uh, please call back and let us know. 
nothing different than what you're doing right now with your child. By the way, physicals are needed for the neural sports as well. Okay, it's not just for the inner scholastic, it's for all of any sport. These are just a few after school clubs we run. At the beginning of the year, your, your child will hear about the after school clubs. They'll be able to sign up. They don't have to go to every meeting. Right? We understand they have other commitments outside of school as well. But anything, you know, between art and book club, like I said, these are just a few of them. They will run either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Again, this will all be communicated to your child. We do have a late bus. The only difference with a late bus, and this is another thing that uh, students have difficulty with, it does not stop at every stop. Right? So we have two late buses. We have an A run and a B run. It all, the the stops will be listed in the handbook that you'll get in late August so that you can just review with your child if they're going to stay out there. Hey, Seth, get off at this stop. And then you'll know that they'll know they go on either A or B. Okay? But we will get the frantic call every once in a while. If not, we call transportation and they just help us out too. Alright? So there's signups during lunch so that we can let transportation know how many students sell the job out. Those That bus usually comes about 3.45 here to pick your job. You can pick them up after the club as well if you'd like. Uh, that's up to you. Um, but there is transportation Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Athletics, other than intramural sports, does not, usually does not use after school transportation. So if your child runs cross country, wrestles, things like that, they don't always finish in time for the day. Band and chorus. So, band and chorus is at our after school programs. Chorus meets every Thursday. Band meets Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, depending on which band. Okay. Um, we have two larger bands. We have a jazz band. We have a string ensemble. Our band director has done a great job of trying to grow the program. If your student is interested in band and has never played an instrument, she would love to have it. She will work with them and work with them and work with them some more because she's trying to grow as much as possible. They've done a phenomenal job, um, but like I said, it's an after school program. Lessons for band are during the day. She creates a schedule for the students, creates her own Google Classroom for them so they know when they have to come to band lessons. Let's say they have band lessons during social studies class, but that day they have a test in social studies. All they have to do is tell her, and she'll find another time to give them the lesson. She understands the balance that has to be between the two. She is phenomenal. Chromebooks. Your students bring a Chromebook home right now? That's what they're doing. Okay. So they will bring them home. They will bring them back and forth every single day. The big thing is they must charge them at night. They charge them at night, they will last all day long. This Englishman right now deals with Chromebook issues. <laughs> deals with Chromebook issues. Hopefully, we'll find somebody else because it is very time consuming. At any point, if something happens to the program, we provide them with a little bit of a screen as long as it, we can tell that it wasn't done intentionally. That's what the insurance is for, and then we move on. Once it's repaired, we give it back to the home. But the thing that we will stress to them over and over again is the charging. They need to take responsibility for the charging. With that being said, we also give them a little case that they get to carry around in um, for protecting it so that if it does fall, hopefully it doesn't break the screen or something. Um, they'll have that device for the next three years of their life. 
agenda books. We provide the kids with agendas. What they do with them? No, I'm just kidding. We provide them with agendas. Now, our goal is that they use it. I get that they have Google Classroom and they can go on Google Classroom and check everything. But that means they've got to go to four, five, six different Google Classrooms. The agenda is all in one place. The teachers will stress them using the agenda, just the organizational piece of it. We will provide it with them. When I meet with them early on, I will stress to them, even if they don't have homework, to write what they don't have homework. So that when they come home and you say, hey, where's your bathroom today? No, look, I don't have it. So we stress over and over again the importance of using This is all posted in our handbook, our grading policy. Again, we use A pluses through F. But our goal is to work with the students. We're not here for the things on the bottom. Okay? Uh, our teachers enter their grades and assessments on Genesis. You have access to their grades all the time. The students, now, this is the first year we've given our students access to Genesis as well, um, which has been really helpful because they've taken that responsibility to monitor their grades as well. We're getting to the fun. This is the fun time. What, what are they worried about? What are they concerned about? Managing their lives. Right? They probably, a lot of them might never use the combination lock. If they come to the open house, they'll get their combination lock if it's in. Well, the supply chain has killed us just like everyone else in this world. So hopefully they'll be in by then, if not by the beginning of the school. It will take time. It will take time. If you have them at home, have them practice. If not, it will take a little bit of time, but they will get it. Changing classes. Probably some of their favorite things that they will learn or do once they get there. As you know, they work with one primary teacher right now, and if that's not a good match, that's a long day. At least here, after 43 minutes, they get to move on. Maybe in a sense. But they also like the idea of getting up and moving around. So they get those couple of minutes to pass. It might be from one, literally one room to the next, it's right next door. But at least they're up and moving and they get to pass those right and say, hey, come on, come on. And they continue to move on. The other part of that, though, is now they've got eight different teachers that they've got. We have a lot of school activities like I mentioned. The academic rigor changes a little bit. Gets a little more challenging. More advanced technology, and they have a little more freedom with their program. We monitor them using GoGuardian. Uh, it's a program that if they look up something that's inappropriate or um, could be harmful to them or somebody else, we get notification. Sometimes it's in social studies class. So it's a quick phone call to the social studies teacher. Hey, what are you doing in class? Talking about World War I. All right, no problem. We're all good. Other times it's not. It's a conversation with one of us, guy on staff, child 17 member, our state letters that are raised. Our teachers also use Google Writing to monitor the, the, the students as they're working. Because we do a lot more. I don't want to say we do a lot more than when they do in the fifth grade, but they are on their own. I'm just going to read one or two of these. So I started this a couple years ago, just asking the students. So in part of writing class this year, our sixth graders are answering these questions for me. What were your initial thoughts, feelings as you were coming to middle school? I was really nervous, and I frequently got lost in the halls. I was nervous that it was going to be complicated and the work was going to be hard. I was a little nervous about going into middle school, but I was excited to have different people in every class. Do it again in December. Yeah, I felt more comfortable around the school. A lot better because I, I 
some things for you guys. <clears throat> your child forgets their lunch, and you have the ability to drop their lunch off. They'll just come to school, ring the bell. The secretary will, of course, ask how they can help you, and they'll just say that my student forgot their lunch. Please, just put their name and grade on it. So, Seth Corbin, sixth grade. Now, that you into the vestibule, there's a rack in the vestibule. We'll just leave it on that rack, and then one of our two lunch aides will come and grab it and bring it into, hopefully, we're just all in the cafeteria. Right now, we're eating in three locations just because of the nature of what went on at the beginning of the year. Hopefully, we'll all just be back in um, the cafeteria. If I didn't say this before, I'm sorry, but half the kids will eat Why the other half are in recess. We still have recess here because our cafeteria is not large enough. Lunch goes through the PTA, just like down in Lake Hero Riverview. Um, it's an online ordering system. Currently, we, do, we have lunch food on Monday. Tuesday, we have bagels. bagels. Uh, Wednesday is pizza. Thursday is back to the bagel place for some sandwiches. And Friday is back to the pizzeria for penne, vodka, salad, Meatball sandwich, things like that. So again, all done through the PTA, one of their biggest wonders. They also sell snack. So in September, you will hear from the PTA, they will need volunteers. It's the only way it works. Selling snacks, handing out lunch, um, and again, two of their biggest wonders. If your student needs to leave early, please just write a note and they'll bring it to the main office. We put that in a, in a book, we sign that note, and that's their pass out box. So if they've got to leave at you know, 1.30 because they have to go to the orthodontist, they'll leave a couple minutes early, get up here so that they're waiting for you when you get there, hopefully. Hopefully they've been there. If not, we'll call them class and get The only thing I say is try to make those appointments before 10 after 2. If you get here 10 after 2, you need to park in the park. Reason being, our buses start coming up and they will be blocked in and it was, there was no reason for you coming to the park because you're stuck in the park. School website. And then we post the Twitter and Instagram. So if you're on Twitter and Instagram, we post as much as possible. Especially in the 
STEM class when they're doing things, but that's granted by the teacher, so the teacher will allow them to go to their locker and get it, and then come back to class. If they don't have a phone, it's not a big deal, somebody else in class will work. Other questions? So, if a student is involved in sports, let's say they play soccer in the fall, cross country in the fall, they can join the club in the wintertime because they'll probably have practice or there will be a conflict thing, but the club runs all year. They, because we have so many clubs, they only meet probably every other week or once a month. It gives the students opportunities to be involved in this, involved in as many things as they want. The only club that we've run in the morning before, and this is a conversation that I'm, I'm having with our band teachers, we did do strings prior to COVID before school started. So the kids that were in the string program. Yes? Is it the same if they're in sports and want to do band, one or the other? If they want to they do will work it out because our, our coaches are very understanding as well as the band. So she will make it work um, along with them. So if they want it, if they're a musician, we've had musicians and athletes, the same. Um, same thing with chorus and band. So if they enjoy both, they work it out. If, if they go to band for a little bit and then go to chorus or vice versa, they'll do that. Same thing with sports. Maybe they'll go to band first and then get outside, um, if that's what it is. But it works out. Other questions? Yes. Yes, yep. They will be done with band in time for the other And like I said, the lessons though is what comes out during the day. Question? Yeah. Uh, so is or Correct. So our expo teacher also teaches art of band. Okay? So for our incoming sixth graders, it expo will replace the art of brain. Okay. Um, because she was able to bring a lot of that into her class. And I will tell you that our expo program is unbelievable, um, but some students were conflicted because they wanted to take those other courses. They wanted to take STEM. They wanted to take family consumer science. So we were able to work it out for our current set of things, so we're just going to continue with it. No, so now they will be in Expo the entire year. So what happens is they'll take Expo on an A day, and they'll have PE on a, on a B day. The next period, they would be in health class, or STEM, or that would be their ninth period class, let's say. Okay? Other questions? So it varies in each subject area. 
In math, there will be three. There's usually three, but one of those three only teaches one, let's call it section of math for sixth grade. They teach seventh grade, which is one. Okay? Our ELA teachers, same thing. So math and ELA are very mirror images of each other just because of the schedule of the First correct. For social studies and science, social studies we have three, six grade? Three, yeah. Three, it's probably three at each, but they teach multiple sections. So if you have family members in other uh, middle schools and things like that, um, we don't teach on teams the way some other middle schools do. We just think about it as a grade And that being because of all the advanced classes and things like that. Other questions? Yeah? From a ballpark timing perspective, when do we find out about the, which level, I guess, the placement happens? Basically? So that, that comes from the fifth grade, like from your elementary school, but I will tell you that for our purposes, we need it sooner than later. Yeah. Um, so I would hope by the end of the month. Oh, okay. End of June. And don't hold me to that because that comes out of Dr. Ellis' office. But like I said, we, we need to start our scheduling process. We started much later than many other schools, too. Um, so it gives sense. The other half of the question is there are some decisions we can get to right, in terms of which ones they want to do. Correct. Oh, no, so that part of it, the, the cooking and things like that, you'll get that form tomorrow. If I didn't get that clear, I apologize. You'll get that form tomorrow through, um, you'll get an email yeah. just saying that the form is open on Genesis. Please yeah. fill it out. You'll have a week to fill that out. Um, there, yes, yeah. But the advanced, the math and the LA placement will come from Dr. Cullis' office, hopefully by the end of the month, because we need to start those. That's what our eighth graders gave them when they went down. So if you're unsure though, and you still have questions, just shoot me an email. It will come through Genesis with a letter. So on Genesis, they'll put a letter in time. Genesis is all the same. Yeah, yeah. It's just that rolled over, as we call it. Um, here, it'll get rolled over, and then we'll just use the same information. Same line, same thing.
It's just like in my school, I will say. Our nurses, and not because they're ours, but they're friendly. They really are. Your child doesn't feel good when tell their teacher. Their teacher won't ask any questions. They'll just send them off to the nurse. The nurse will then have a conversation. Ask, go through the whole process. Sometimes they'll say, you want to call mom, you want to call dad, you want to call whoever, and have a conversation with you. I mean, they, they are really good about it. Our goal is for the students to be here, of course. But at the same time, it's not going to um, negatively affect everybody else around them. And they get to know them pretty quick, right? If they're frequent flyers, they get to know them. <laughs> and they can also, they're great at meeting people. Are you really sick? Or did you need a wall? We get it. It's okay. Other questions? So one becomes a primary, yeah. depending on busing, our transportation has accommodated it at times. I don't want to tell you that it will definitely happen, um, just because if, the, if there's no room, because it's a, one of the smaller buses that has to go to one of those houses, and like I said, every kid picked to be a bus student on there, then they're going to say you have to go to the primary. But we have accommodated you know, two homes in the past. The difference is only one will be listed on Genesis. So it then becomes parent responsibility, please, to sit down with your child and say, hey, Tuesday, Thursday, you're going on 180, but Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you've got to go on 184. That's on you, kind of thing. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Like I said, I got it at home. So, other questions? Well, thank you so much for coming. If you do have questions that are going to come up, Mr. Richmond and myself will be here. Um, if not, we really look forward to September. And then again, my one message, don't stress about that.